everybody. Uh, uh, been said, thank you. Uh, my name is Donovan, a undergraduate, or I guess soon to be graduate, at the University of Rochester, and I'm here to talk about uh, data and distance uh, joint work that I did with Professor uh, Chen Ding of the computer science at the University of Rochester. So our work builds on the foundation from the relational theory locality, uh, Juan and Smith and Peter, who really defined the locality concept uh, in this paper in 2019. We have um, really three different views of locality, um, and they're, they're pretty much summarized by the, um, by the misratio or the mesh on the, on the right side. The misratio was uh, with the, um, oh, am I cutting out? Uh, yes, probably uh, if, I mean, your network connection is not very well, you need to turn off your uh, I mean, uh, video and uh, just show your audio. Let's see if it works. Yeah, if it works better, yeah. Okay, let's try, yeah, thanks. Um, so, so in this paper, the relational theory of locality, um, the, the theory shows the three different views of locality. Um, and, and so we look at the last column, the metric, um, that's science is really the art of, of measurement. We can look at the metric and that is the, the description of locality. You can, there is three different ways here. One of the ways is uh, data movement it can be measured by the ratio, which is what we will do, um, what we will show in, in, in this talk. We can think of it as uh, the kind of reuse by the reuse interval or reuse distance. And we can kind of look at the uh, working set as, or the size uh, of the foot uh, in that last, last row there. One of the things that we uh, as, as I just like to do is it abstractions for programmers uh, and then just uh, letting them focus on what they are uh, work on specifically and to take away uh, the cash line power constraint. Um, we attempt to do this trick uh, to put in that specifically for algorithms. Uh, so let's look at the locality metrics a little bit. For these two traits, the cyclic and tooth, um, looking at the foot first, if we take a kind of sliding window of, of size X over here, uh, as we go through, either, let's look at the trace first. Um, if we take a, a window size of one, then there will only ever be one element in it. If we take a window size of two, there are only two distinct elements in it, and that's all the way up to a, a trace size or the data size, if we're saying it's length M. Um, we have a window size of LS1, then we go uh, only still, in, still containing M distinct elements. So that's where we use the foot, the window, uh, the working sets uh, average will be a, a maximum of M. However, if we look at the sawtooth trace, um, there should be the, uh, right ones there. Uh, if we just uh, a size three trace, because this is so significantly complicated, uh, we can that for window size one, it's the same thing, only ever be one distinct element. But when we cross the barrier here, we go one, two, three, two, one, a window of two to have only distinct element, which gives uh, us a lower average than, than two, as we expect with cyclic trace. Similarly, three, have, if we started at this one, uh, we only have two distinct elements in that window, two distinct elements in that window. So as we take the average, it'll still be less than three. But once we get to five, for example, we'll always have um, three distinct elements in it. And that generates for M distinct uh, data, 
a data size. So that's uh, a brief overview of friends. If you look at the miss ratio, um, which is approximately finite difference for print, it's the ratio of, of misses to hits. We see that uh, for the cyclic trace, if we have um, any cache that's less than M, assume LRU cache will never reach, uh, we will not get a hit because it will never be any reason to use until we get up to a cache size M when all the data is contained in the cache and everything will be a hit. For this tooth trace, it's again a little bit uh, more difficult. Um, it it, uh, it goes down by one third, and because this one would be a hit with, with a cash size one, two would be a hit for cash size two, and it, it continues uh, larger data sizes as well. For the reuse interval, uh, it's slightly more complicated than with reuse in the reuse distance. The only difference. Reuse distance looks at distinct data elements. Well, reuse interval looks at the total data. It's between two consecutive axes. So between two consecutive axes of A1 in the cyclic trace are both minus one distinct and M minus one total data elements. And similarly for two and A3. However, for the um, the sawtooth trace, between consecutive axes of A1, there are all M minus one other pieces of data linked, where there is two times the number of total data axes. So the difference between interval and distance. A2, there's M minus two distinct elements, and two, again, times that's the, the total d data axes. We usually use reuse distance because that helps with our U cache. Uh, so now that we have gone through a little of the locality metrics, we can talk about time based complexity. Why we're going to improve on this for DMD. We know time based complexity or algorithmic, uh, we learn them in, in either school or college. Uh, and and they, they are algorithmic or ontotic efficiencies of the implementation uh, and they use no as approximate. So that's using quicksort, for example, we can have the time complexity of sorting n else in the of n line away from the processor. Um, and that that is what we try to improve upon here, that uh, if there is a piece of data that is close to the processor, we know it should be more efficient to use that data than to uh, try to find data that is in another level of memory or further away because of the wires and the way that um, the machines actually work. And since processing speeds are faster and faster, um, if, if we are waiting for data to the processor, we are wasting time. So this is what we try to do to measure here using DD. Should I keep going or? Uh, yeah, please go ahead. Let me change you to the presenter. Yeah, please go ahead, thanks. Okay. Well, thanks for Donovan's uh, presentation so far. So as Donovan said, the previous complexity measure for time and space do not really consider the modern memory hierarchy. So uh, in particular, the time of data access, does not consider locality at all. Accessing data that's next to the processor is no different uh, from accessing data anywhere else in memory. And so both time and space complexity assumes flat memory. But the complexity does have a 
distinct feature, which is uh, it's asymptotic, uh, meaning that the difference, even though uh, depends on specific implementation, for example, programming language being used, uh, but algorithmically there can be efficiency difference, then that's show uh, through the asymptotic meshing. And so here we want to uh, develop something that can measure the memory cost. So for this paper and this talk, it's going to be only about sequential algorithms, a sequential program. And then given this uh, execution model, we consider memory as a abstract cache hierarchy. So here is a definition. We can vi uh, visualize this as a series of concentric circles surrounding the processor. Remember, there's just one processor, and then each level of this cache hierarchy is a circle. And then the successive levels stores just one more unit of data. You can think of one cache block more than the previous uh, circle. The data movement distance, so now we're going to uh, talk about what we uh, want to measure. So it's defined for each circle as the radius of the circle. And then there are specific assumptions we can make about whether it's a, maybe it's a square, not a circle. But those actually, we argue, do not matter. Uh, what we are, we are not comparing. So we're comparing algorithms. So we're not comparing uh, memory implementation. Uh, so it's not about the, what algorithm using square memory or disk memory. Uh, it's really about two different algorithms using the same shape memory. So in this case, for us, it's sufficient that the radius, the data movement distance, is uh, just proportional to square root of the, uh, the cache size, which is C. And once we have this measure of locality by distance, then the speed of program execution uh, will be the distance divided by time. Uh, so now what's really interesting is that the unit of speed measured by this memory cost by DMD is actually DMD per second, and then if we think of the data movement distance as physical, uh, anytime we put data on a real system, on real memory, then this uh, DMD is actually a physical distance, but it's meters or nanometers, but it's physical. So the speed of DMD per second is actually uh, the same unit as the uh, physical speed. So the, there's not too long ago the, we saw the stunning video of uh, Perseverance landing on Mars. And the, as the probe descend onto the Martian surface, the narrator is talking about 500 meters per second, 400 meters per second. That is the same unit we're now talking about once we measure the memory cost by DMD. And then, of course, I should say that the memory speed is not hurting a computer through space, but you just have the same unit. And then um, for a long time, people always have the question how to measure locality. But then uh, a part of that question is, what's the unit of locality? Now we waste the DMD measure. It's the same unit as physical distance. And we're going to show the definition and then the fact that it's asymptotic uh, using these two examples. So the, for a given 
program, a given algorithm, the DMD, the data movement the distance, is the total distance of all data accesses. So if we think of the of our abstract cache hierarchy at level C, remember the DMD is square root of C, and then all we need to do is that for each level of the abstract cache hierarchy, we find out how many accesses happen at that cache level, and then just multiply by the radius of that cache level. So that's the total DMD. So that's the definition. So let's just look at the applying this definition to two data traversals. And in both cases, we just repeatedly traverse m elements, m data. The first way it's cyclic, so you just repeat the same sequence a1 to a m, and then the DMD is showing here. For also here we are assuming LRU cache. We can certainly define this for other type of cache. And then LRU cache for a cyclic sequence, we know that the the cache will have no cache hits until the cache size is m. And then if we calculate the data movement distance for one traversal, so that means m accesses every n access in this cyclic sequence uh, because the all the hits will happen at cache level m. So the DMD for each access is square root of m, there are m accesses. So the total DMD for one traversal is m times square root of m. Now that's Another way we can traverse the same group of elements is Saltius. This is Peter Denning's name. Uh, so we have A1, A2 to AM, and then um, we do AM, AM minus one. So it's, a, it's a stack pattern that we're familiar with. And then there, the resistance is such that we have uniform distribution of cache hits at every level from one to M, and then the DMD for M for one traversal is the sum of square root of C for C from one to M. And then if we approximate that as the integration, then and actually integrate this sum, we have the, the result here, and that's approximately two thirds of M times square root of M. So now we have the two results. DMD for a cyclic traversal and for a saltus traversal. So it's symbolic because we're having the data size as M, and then the results show naturally that if M is large enough, the saltus DMD is two third of cyclic DMD. So this is the constant factor. And then if we are assuming, so here we're assuming the circuit is a 2D memory, that's why we have square root uh, over here. If we think of 1D memory, we can actually define the same metric, and then we'll see that Sawtooth's DMD is one half of cyclic. But in both cases, we see that now um, there is a difference that's, um, that's symbolic. Um, it's the same way we have the asymptotic measures of the uh, time and space complexity. Let me see what's the next slide. There is an important difference though, right? So here we have the asymptotic precision uh, that's different from time and space complexity because in time complexity, for example, the constant factor doesn't matter. You think of a quick sort versus bubble sort. Uh, but here, when we think of about the DMDs we had before, um, the constant factor for the largest term actually matters. And that, that is important because distance is physical. It doesn't really make sense when we say constant factor, it doesn't matter. And then the definition of DMD captures this difference. Uh, so the, the difference between cell two and six like, that we saw before is actually the difference not in the um, symbolic um, 
girls, they, they, they both are m times square root of m, but the difference is the constant factor. Uh, one is two thirds of the other. And then, like time complexity, we also can simplify. So there are less significant terms and the coefficients can be dropped. And then the last point, uh, it's uh, just mentioned quickly, is that um, if we look at different implementations of either cyclic or sawtooth traversal, uh, we, if we model these as a adding constant number of axes, when we traverse something, we use this uh, to do something. So adding a constant number of axes after each traversal. So these do not actually change the asymptotic DMD. Uh, if people want me to explain that more, I can do that in, uh, at the end. And here, again, just showing the example that we now have an issue uh, that's a function of the data size and then captures the difference in the growth of these preoperation cost. Uh, so now we see the difference between hierarchical memory and flat memory is that in flat memory, every access takes unit time, constant time. But in hierarchical memory as measured by DMD, the cost now is measured by distance. And that distance in our example grows as a square root of the data size. But then different algorithms, we see the different growth. Um, the, even though the, the growth factor square root of m is the same, but the uh, coefficients is different. So that just demonstrates this new definition and sort of what's, how it's similar to uh, the complexity we had before, but also how it differs and for its uh, use in measuring locality and memory cost. And, and this is the last slide, I think, in 1976, uh, we have this uh, influential book uh, right by first generation computer scientists defining programs as algorithms plus data structures. And now with the modern memory, uh, modern computers, memory hierarchy is uh, of paramount importance because data movement has the most cost uh, in both time and the energy power consumption. Now the question is, how do we model the cost of accessing memory? And then if we can model it, so DMD is certainly a solution that we're pursuing, then we can actually measure the locality of algorithms. So I can, um, for modern systems, modern uh, efficient programs, we need this third factor, uh, not just the algorithms data structures, but also we need good locality and that measure of locality would be the DMD that we're uh, working on. I think that's the end. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. It's a, it's a very interesting work. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a long standing I mean, topic, uh, but I mean, uh, this is really interesting I mean, uh, mm -hmm. uh, conclusions. So, uh, <clears throat> Uh, any questions from yeah from audience? I see the previous presenter uh, Pumala, Pumala still here. Uh, uh, watching her talk was excellent work. Um, I was curious what did the difference that they're showing. So with CNC model on the one hand and fog drawing on the other. Of course, uh, in uh, the in the previous paper is about parallel. Execution. So that's another direction we're extending. Uh, yes. But I think potentially CNC may also improve locality by allowing a different audit, traverse order of these steps. Mm -hmm. But if it can improve, then one way to demonstrate that would be show the DMD difference. Yes, yes. That's exactly uh, what I'm, uh, I want to ask. So is there any way to extend this to some? I mean, uh, existing programming models or yeah, any parallel uh, programs, yeah. yeah. Even for the yeah, probably not yeah. next Higgs paper. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, probably next as paper. 
<laughs> so, so in in theory, actually, if it's shared memory parallelism, it applies directly because if I assuming there is no difficulties, so actually Julian is asking the obstacles and issues we may encounter. So if we go into a parallel program, then the question would be what's the access uh, data access sequence? And so, so for each core, what is the cache miss ratio uh, mm -hmm. for a cache of every size? If we know that, I think we can extend the MD, but we don't, I don't know what we, uh, how difficult that would yes. be. Yeah. Yes, that, that probably that will be yeah, more difficult. Yeah. We need some, I mean, simply simplification here or something. Uh, based on my understanding, <laughs> I'm not an expert in this part. Uh, I'm working on the cache and the uh, program data locality optimizations, but yeah, I don't have, I mean, uh, so deep insight as you as you did here. <laughs> yeah, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you're following our work. <laughs> yeah, thanks. It's just a difficult memory hierarchy, just increasingly complex. It's this, uh, so it's a cake, it doesn't matter how we cut, it's, it's a big one, it's just different way of looking at the problem. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So we have a, a question from Julia. Yeah. Uh, so, what were the key obstacles or issue you enc uh, encounter during your research? I mean, yeah, the key obstacles. <laughs> it's the so locality is uh, depends on what data the program has and how the data is accessed. So that's what we mean by. Uh, from memory perspective, that's what the program is doing. I don't know whether that's a, it's, it's a short answer. Uh, we, I can certainly give you a very long answer uh, to this question, uh, but overall it's really the data access that is what you know, we care about and try to understand. Yeah, particularly but, uh, some irregular memory access or? Yeah, yeah that's included. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so basically, are you saying um, that modeling the data access pattern of the program, so capturing it and modeling it, that's the key issue that you have? Is that right? Yes. Okay. Just to be sure. Yeah. yeah. Good answer. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.